In this coding exercise, we are asked to build a multiplication table. Now this may seem like a pretty straightforward exercise, and in a sense it is. However, there are a few hidden gotchas that even an experienced developer may run into. So I wanna take a step-by-step -step approach and talk about what we need to do. And first, I'm gonna come down and I'm actually going to kind of break it down and walk through what my approach would be. For example, if I was asked to do this in a coding interview, I would kind of walk through what I would write down on the whiteboard for my thought process. Because remember, when you're taking some type of coding interview, the, the most important thing that the interviewer is looking for is not only that you know how to write code, but also that you know how to think methodically and how you can analyze a problem and build a solution to solve it. So let's take that approach. So first and foremost, we know we're going to need some iterators. We know that we're going to have to create a loop because as we can see from the top, we need to create any number of multiplication tables. So if you look at the test here, what it is looking for is that to create a hash and the hash is gonna be the multiplication table. For example, the key for one is going to be one and then the values are one, two, three, four, all the way down to 10. That is one multiplied by each one of those. Now, if we come down to three, three is gonna be the key and then after that, it's gonna be three, six, nine, 12, and it's gonna be that full multiplication table for three. So we know we're going to have to have a couple ways to iterate. We first are going to have to iterate through a range from one to whatever the number is that is given as the argument there in the multiplication table method. That's gonna be the first iterator. So that's gonna be iterator one is gonna go from one to the number. We're the, we're, after that though, we're gonna have a second iterator. So this is gonna be a nested kind of iteration process because not only do we have to iterate from one to the number, we also need to multiply whatever the element is. So whatever, and I'll put the current number is going to have to be multiplied by the range of one to 10. So as you can see, what we're going to do is iterate and each time we get to a new number, we're then going to have to take that number and then multiply it by the range one through 10. So those are gonna be our two iterators. We also obviously know we're gonna to have to work with a hash because that is what we're returning. So we're going to have to create a hash, add to it. But one thing that you may notice is we're only creating one hash and that is very important. So we're creating a hash and that is what we are going to be adding to. Now the other thing we're gonna be doing, as you can see, is our hash is going to have a value of nested arrays. So nested arrays are gonna be what the values are and that is what we're going to add on top of. So in knowing these things, this gives us a pretty good idea of the components we need. Now what I wanna do is actually write some pseudocode for how we would solve this. So I'm going to, and what pseudocode is, is it's kind of taking the features and it's walking through what our algorithm is going to have to do. So we know for a fact that our the first thing that we're gonna have to do is we're going to have to iterate from one to whatever the provided number is. From there, we are going to take that and we're going to create a second iterator. So we're going to iterate from the current element or current number and we're going to then multiply that by our range, just like I put right above. 
And if you're wondering why it almost kind of seems like we're doing duplicate code, it's because this isn't really pseudocode. This is more just kind of my mind map for deciding how exactly we, what components we're going to need to solve the process. This is actually the process itself. So we're going to iterate from one to whatever the provided number is. Inside of that, notice how I indented this to show that it's inside of it. We're going to iterate from the current number, and then we're going to multiply that. And in fact, I'm just going to get rid of this and put it inside of here just to make it clear. So I'm going to say for the nested element, and this is going to be multiplied by the current number. And then this is going to be an added to array. And then from this point, so after it has gone through that, we're going to have to push, or I'm not gonna say push, because push is some a term for arrays, and that's what we're actually gonna get into. I'm just gonna say add new key and array value to hash and then at the very end I'm going to say just return final hash so this pretty much explains what we are going to do we need to obviously fill in the blanks but that's what we're going to do next so we have our multiplication table here first and foremost we know that we're going to need a hash so I'm going to create that right here so I'm going to say hash dot new and this is what we're going to eventually put our entire formula in so we're that's where we're going to put our return values in so now looking at our pseudocode we know we need to go from one to whatever the number is so i'm going to say one up to num and then we're going to iterate over this and i'm going to call this block variable i so now that we have that we know that we're going to need a fresh array for every time that this goes up. So right here, we know that we are going to have one, two, three for our test case, but it could be one to a hundred or one to a thousand. So we know that we're going to do that. And with each new item, we need a fresh array. And we know that because look at this, we have one, two, and three. Each time that this process starts, we need to start with a clean slate. We can't have these numbers and then have them multiplied or have any kind of semblance of the historical data. We need to have a fresh copy. So that tells me that inside of this array or inside of this iteration, we're going to say products equal and create an empty array. I'm calling them products because that's what they are. They're going to be I, the whatever the current number is, multiplied by 1 through 10. So with that in mind, I'm going to say 1 dot dot 10 to create our range. And then I'm going to say each do. And then from here, I'm going to give another block variable. And this one's going to be E. And now we need to push onto our products array. Remember the push method I mentioned? We are going to push, which if you are curious on push, push simply adds an item to an array. So if I have an array like this of one, two, and three, oh, it'd probably help if I had the right syntax. So if I have an array of one, two, three, and I say array dot push, I can put something else so I can put 444, four, four, paste that in, and now you can see that's what the array is. Now, usually when I'm adding to an array, I use the shovel operator. That's what I do probably nine times out of 10. So I do something like this, but the times where I will use push is when I'm actually pushing something that has a formula itself. So, and I, and there's no real reason for that. I just prefer the way that it looks. And it also reads nice in this sense. So I'm going to say E times I. And all that is doing, if don't let the E and the I just by themselves confuse you, the I is going to be one to whatever the number is. So looking down at our example, I is going to be one 
followed by two, followed by three. So every time that this iterates, it's going to be one, two, and three, or whatever the current number is. E, on the other hand, is going to be one of the values from one to 10. So the first time around, this is going to be one times one. Second times around, it's going to be two times one. Third time, three times one, all the way until it's 10 times one. Then it's going to finish this loop and it's gonna come all the way back up to the top. It's gonna to change to two. Products array is going to clear out. It's gonna come down and it's gonna start that whole process over where E is one again, except this time it'll be one times two, two times two, three times two, all the way through. So hopefully that part of it kind of makes sense. Now, with all of that in place, the next thing that we need to do is before we go all the way back up and change to the next number, we need to update our hash. So we need to create this element. So when it's one, at the very end, what we're gonna do is generate this hash value, this key value pair of one, and then add the array on top of it then they can move on and go to two, three, so on and so forth. Okay, so now that we have this, I can say hash, and I need to fix my indentation. So I can say hash right here, and then I'll pass in i, set this equal to products, because by this time the products is gonna be an array of 10 elements, and as soon as it's done being set, it's going to update this hash, it's gonna come back up, and then products is going to clear off and it's gonna be empty again. Now, all I have to do at the very end is return the hash. So if everything that I've done is accurate, and I don't have any typos or anything, this should work. Let's, uh, and for this one, the cool thing is I don't even have to use this test data. Let's come down all the way to the bottom and I'm going to call our method. So this is gonna be the multiplication table method. And if I wanna create a table of 12 items, then I can, I'm gonna save this and run it. Coming all the way down, look at that. We have a hash generated. The, when it's one, when the value is one, then we have the correct elements. When it's two, it's two times all the elements, three, it's three times all of them, so on and so forth, all the way down to 12. That is fantastic. I'm gonna come here, let's delete that. I will keep the, I'm gonna keep this, the pseudocode, I'm gonna keep all of this in the show notes for you, just so you can have it, and so that you can kind of see my own thought process when I'm writing that down, if you find that helpful. And the last thing we're gonna do is let's run our tests. So January 21st, run this, and one example, zero failures. So that is how you can build your own dynamic multiplication table in Ruby.